please welcome Republican Jackson County, Senator Mitch Carmichael, the Senate President, or Senator Knucklehead, <laughs> as he's known by some. Good morning, Hoppy. Reference there to last Friday on Transportation Day, where the governor said he needs some help from some of these knuckleheads on some of these issues. And the next speaker, Mitch <coughs> Carmichael, said... I'm your chief knucklehead. Chief knucklehead, <laughs> right here. Well, listen, we uh, work with the governor. He's uh, he has a little folksy uh, way of uh, his demeanor and referring to folks. And uh, did I, did, I know you it didn't bother you. Probably did it bother you know. You, uh, uh, no, uh, you know, nobody uh, likes that kind of talk. But uh, by the same token, uh, you know, I'm not going to use that kind of language. But I really like the governor. He's a good guy, and uh, I look forward to working with him. And we'll find uh, common ground on this budget issue and many other problems that confront the state. Where is the common ground on the budget? Because we've been talking now since the governor made his proposal, $450 million in new taxes, $27 million in cuts. You guys, Republican majority, say, I ah, know, we don't want to go there on that. So what is the common ground, in your opinion? Well, in my view, uh, what he has said publicly and privately uh, is that he's, look, bring me a better idea, and I'm all ears. He says, uh, you know, uh, maybe this isn't the proper, perfect approach. And it, it, I feel it's incumbent upon those who say no to this plan to offer a different one. And, uh, you know, maybe for years around here that hasn't been uh, uh, viewed in that manner in the sense that uh, if we do not have if we want to say no to what the governor proposes, because I believe it is the wrong direction, Hoppy. I think an expansion of government by $500 million reaching into the taxpayers of West Virginia's pocket and pulling out $500 million to prop up this government and expand government programs in a time and in which we are the poorest state in the nation. I mean, our people, the people in West Virginia are the, the poorest people in the nation. Somebody always corrects me and says Mississippi uh, has a lower per capita income, but do you want to argue whether you're yeah. 49th or 50? So I just don't think it's the right approach. Many economists do not believe it's the right approach. That we, sh The better approach is to streamline government and fundamentally change the manner in which we tax our citizens to incent jobs and opportunity. Mitch, I'm going to, and we're going to keep talking about this until Republicans come out with their own budget plan, and then we'll have some some figures to latch on to, but it comes down to this. And I was just talking to some folks this morning, quite frankly, who implied to me that still there are a lot of Republicans who think, well, you can sweep some money here and you can reduce a little bit there and you can nip and tuck, who have not come to the realization that if you're going to reduce spending, you're going to have to make real substantive cuts. Listen, and, I, oh, I'm sorry. No, and, and does your caucus, do, do your members get that? Yes, there, there is a, uh, a widespread recognition, I, and I've heard what you uh, alluded to, that there's a concept out there that we can just sweep some accounts here and there and struggle by, and it's painless. That is not the case. Uh, there are many government programs uh, in West Virginia that perhaps we've gone too far beyond the scope and role of government. Uh, and the real function of this society and this government is to say, what should government do? What really, what services should we provide? In my view, and I think in the view of most you know, people that look at government, it's public safety, public infrastructure, public education, and providing, finally, a social safety net for those who need our help. Uh, and that is the role of government. Beyond that, we do too many things that, that really extract taxpayer money and think that we're better than the government or that the citizens and we know better than them when will the senate have well i guess the the, the house is working on the budget it starts in the house but you are working on one too i mean yes. will we speaking for the senate when will you have a document that says here's where we're going to cut when will you have that we'll have that in the next two weeks really in the next two weeks which uh for your listeners that is unprecedented in terms of speed and efficiency of putting forth a budget we will have a spending document that outlines the uh, substantive cuts or these uh, programs that we believe are very necessary to fund. Also, we'll put forth a new tax structure in West Virginia for what I want to tell the people, and I want to sell this plan so hard, is that there is what we are doing in West Virginia does not work. Every year you're in here covering what budget we're going to cut, what line item we're going to cut. We need to get away from this over-reliance on a fossil fuel economy in which we're tied to the severance price of, of coal and natural gas. 
we can change this system and fundamentally change the direction of West Virginia for growth and prosperity. And you're talking about massive tax reform, and we had Senator Robert Carnes on yesterday, who's chair of that uh, committee who's been working on that. And, you know, I, I, I give you props for, for taking a big bite on that. We'll see what comes out. But, you know, Mitch, two things about that. One is you're talking about getting rid of the personal, in, at, some, at some point, getting rid of the personal income tax, uh, corporate net maybe at some point, getting rid of a lot of these taxes, uh, consumer sales tax as it exists now, which are the big revenue producers for the state, and replacing them with, with an overall uh, consumption tax and just collecting enough money there through the consumption tax of maybe as much as 8%. One, that's risky because you don't know if you're going to have enough to run the essentials of government. And two, 8% consumption tax. Now you're talking about 8% on food. You're talking about 8% on a lot of things of, that are essential to life. So well, uh, two things. You've mentioned two things. One is there's risk in it. And we will. I can absolutely eliminate that concern for you. We will uh, stagger the implementation of a new tax structure such that we recognize the revenue prior to the change. So we will stagger it and and, and plan it properly absolutely can alleviate that concern. Your second concern about the regressive nature of a tax and perhaps putting it on food, that those all are being negotiated. Those things are uh, uh, re being reviewed. There's options there. There's flexibility as it re relates to that. What I will say, though, to the people of West Virginia and to you, we've looked around the nation. The states that are prosperous, growing, 50, 60 percent growth over the last 20-some years, have all the common denominator is they have no income tax no income tax and what's what we're doing in west virginia hoppy we're last that's half the that's half the general revenue budget right and we can personal income tax. absolutely it's 1.9 billion dollars and uh the exemptions we have in our current sales tax are 2.1 yeah. well i know we got yeah. all these exemptions but if you say again if you say well there's certain things we got to look at that are open for debate if, if you start that list mm -hmm. of things that would be exempt from this new consumption tax all of a sudden the money the money you take in starts to go down well what about food well uh, well, that's a big number. Mm -hmm. You know, what about uh, visiting the doctor? Well, that's a big number. What about prescriptions? Well, that's a big number. So, uh, right, these jobs aren't easy. I mean, these negotiate <laughs> these, this process is not easy. What? But the motivation for doing it is that we're failing. The current system is failing. We're last in per capita income. We're the only state to have lost population in 50 years. When you look at that, it, just an empirical, uh, unaffiliated, un you know biased view of that. It's ridiculous to continue that same system. We are going to fundamentally change this. This is our moment in history. We have a time, this chance, in this legislature to change the direction and the course of history for our state. We're going to put it on a path of growth and prosperity. And I want to work to the gov with the governor to do that. He has the same vision. We may have a different way of getting there, but I look forward to you know finding common ground to move the state forward. Senator Mitch Carmichael, who is the president of the state Senate and is a Republican from Jackson County. This budget, and there's other things going on. I mean, I, for example, um, whenever we run a story, and I'm going to talk to Brad McElney about this momentarily, whenever we run a story about something else the legislature did, somebody says, why aren't you working on the budget? And in fact, you guys, believe it or not, can walk and chew gum at the same time. So there is work on the budget, even though other things are happening. Yeah, so. Listen, to the people of West Virginia, this budget will be completed in record time, record time. and. Uh, so uh, people should feel comfortable with that. I've heard read stories where somebody says, you know, look, you're 10 days into the session and you don't have a budget. Really, that's, that's a ridiculous comment. <laughs> do, do, do you think the governor, and do you get the vibe that the governor's open to compromise if you all come back and say, well, here's our idea? Absolutely. I, I, I get the sense that this governor is willing to accept. He recognizes, as, as do I and uh, any reasonable person, you don't always have the corner on the great ideas. And if somebody can bring a better idea, it's incumbent upon you to embrace that and to, to move forward rather than just dig in your heels and say, it's my way or the highway. And finally, speaking of highway, he's, he's really out pumping hard this highway plan to raise the uh, gasoline tax by 10 cents, to raise the DMV fees, and to raise the tolls, to raise something almost $3 billion for roads. You in or out on that? I'm absolutely in. I believe that uh, the... Even on raising the gas tax. Listen, the people of West Virginia need to decide if they want to raise their gas tax to pay for these roads. I'm absolutely for putting that to the people's vote. Oh, so, you, okay. Now, the governor's... And there we go. Hold on. Because <laughs> the governor wants to go ahead and do it and then get the, get the citizens to pass the bond issue. 
issue. You want the bond issue first. You want the vote first. I want it incorporated in one vote in which the people of West Virginia decide I'm going to pay more for my gasoline so that I can have these roads built. It's their decision, and I'm, uh, as a legislator, willing to put that to the people's vote. Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, Senator Mitch Carmichael, who is the president of the state Senate. Mitch, good to see you. It's always a pleasure, Hoppy. Thanks for being here. Thank you much. We'll return to the Capitol in just a moment. Stay with us.